In this lesson, we're going to do a little bit of site uh, work. Revit is not the greatest um, landscaping, land CAD kind of tool. It's really good inside the building, not so much on the outside. Um, roads and sloping curbs and stuff. Um, curbs are generally going to be walls and sidewalks are going to be floors. So we don't have a curb and we don't have a sidewalk family. We use little stubby walls and floors with sloping stuff. So, uh, but we can create some nice terrain models. So I'm going to uh, go to my site plan and it's kind of looking up in the sky and I'm going to zoom way out and I'm going to create some uh, site property lines and some topo surface. So uh, let's start by doing property lines. I'm going to go to massing and site. And I'm going to create what are property lines. When I create property lines, I can create by sketching or by entering the distance and bearings as I go around. So I'm just going to go by sketching. And I'm going to draw some lines. So I don't have a survey in front of me, but let's say I'm just going to go, you know, from here uh yeah from here to here maybe over to here and back to here and then maybe do an arc you know from here to there there's my property and finish click out there's my property lines probably changes to be one to 500 Okay, and I can take that guy and I can kind of move it around wherever I want. I'm going to position it. And from there, I'm going to add some dimensions and say, okay, dimension from here to, you know, the corner of that grid line is, you know, that far. And the dimension from here to the corner of intersection of this grid line or foundation wall, however you want to pick the surface. From there to some point, I can tab or pick or create a reference point. Place that one. And then this time, I'm going to go from here to here. Now, in this one, it's going to be a little bit trickier because I'm going to a radius point. So I almost need to create a reference plane somewhere along here. you know, kind of tangent and then do a dimension from here to here, place it. And then I need to take this guy and move it out to be tangent to that arc. That's the best way to kind of solve that problem. So we can create our property lines here and we can tag those. Let's go to annotate now that they're in there. Uh, tag by category and then pick on here and it says oh there's no tag loaded you want to load one yes and let's go back to our metric and annotations and let's go civil property line tag hit okay some or all of them you select cannot be loaded you must choose family types of category property line segment tag okay Let's go back and try that again. Yes, metric. Um, annotation. Is there something in here? M. I'm pretty sure it's under civil. Property M. Property line tag. Oh, that's a property tag, not a property line tag. I got it. So I can place that on there, and this one on there, and this one on there, and this one on there. So after I've done it, Revit's smart enough to know the length and the bearing of that um, set of property lines. And let's go down and make a new sheet. And it goes, and right-click on here, rename Site plan, it should be called SP1 or something like that instead, but it'll do for now. Take my site plan and drag it out, place it, 
one to 500, uh, that doesn't look too bad. I, that's a big sheet, so it's probably just fine and quite legible. Okay, so there is my property lines and my site plan.